Digging out from a deep freeze, why the aftermath of the storm could be worse than the storm itself. Plus, the state's attorney general will launch an investigation into MSU and how it handled Dr. Larry Nasser. From your breaking news and weather authority, you're watching News 10 Today. Good morning. It is Friday, January 5th. I'm Kirk Montgomery. And I'm Laura Painter. Welcome to News 10 Today. And Darren, oh, people on the east, they've had their problems to deal with. Well, well, well they had all own. the snow. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. they had a foot of snow. Now they're going to get the cold that we had. Yeah. For us, I mean, it's just the, the bitter chill. cold. And it's out there right now. And mm -hmm. it holds on through tomorrow. So be prepared for that. Yeah. Uh, start off with a look at our weather headlines. And once again today, we will see high temperatures, single digits to near 10. This morning, early on, wind chills down down around 20 below most of the day they'll be between 15 and about 5 below we will at least have some sun today it is currently 3 below 0 in Lansing 11 below is the current temperature in Jackson one above in Hillsdale wind chills right now the winds have picked up just a little bit in Lansing it is now dropped the wind chill to 13 below 11 below in Jackson and notice from Owasso to Howell to Ann Arbor wind chills right now 18 19 to around Ooh. 20 below 0 for today we end up being partly cloudy, there might be a stray flurry in the air. Predicted high temperatures, single digits to around 10, but to plan on those wind chills again early today around 20 below most of the day between 15 and about five below zero. Of course, we'll check out the next seven days coming up. All right, well, as Darren just mentioned, much of our viewing area under that wind chill advisory this morning. Yeah, which means things like hypothermia and frostbite can happen if you're not careful, and it can happen fast. When the wind chill is zero to 15 degrees below zero, it only takes about half an hour or an hour to, for exposed skin to get frostbite. That time is cut in half when the wind chill is between negative 15 and 30 degrees below. It takes less than 10 to 15 minutes to get frostbite when the wind chill is negative 30 to 50 degrees below. We're not the only ones that have to worry about frostbite as we start our cars this morning. Yeah, dozens of cities are set to deal with record breaking cold. News 10's meteorologist Jim Holton has more on these frigid temps and Jim, misery loves company. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true and uh, yeah, it's a little bit miserable out there this morning. We have the very cold temperatures and we are under that wind chill advisory here in mid Michigan. Wind chill warnings extending up through northern Michigan as well, but as we've mentioned, we're not the only ones dealing with the cold. We have the wind chill advisories and warnings all over the East Coast and even in the deep south. They are right now dealing with a hard freeze warning and freeze warnings across parts of southern Florida as well. And as we zoom in on southern Florida, notice some of those light blue shadings just north of Miami over near Naples as well. That is a wind chill advisory down there. Now a little bit of a different criteria for them. Only wind chills down into the 30s, but certainly that is very frigid for southern Florida. Now as we go throughout the next couple of days, we will finally start to see some relief, but we are still cold for today. Once we head into the day tomorrow, we're starting out again below zero, warming back up a little bit. We should be in the double digits here in mid-Michigan. They should be able to make it into the 40s and 50s there into the deep south. And once we get into Sunday, finally starting to see a little bit more of a moderating trend with those temperatures. Okay, thank you, Jim. The East Coast blizzard may be gone, but the effects of it could last for days. At least five deaths have been blamed on the storm. Three people died in North Carolina. One person died in both Pennsylvania and Virginia. And the storm dumped a foot and a half of snow on Boston. The storm also pushed the waters of Boston Harbor into city streets. Take a look at that. Oh my gosh. You can see several cars stuck on a neighborhood street in Revere, Massachusetts. The record setting storm like this hasn't been seen in that area in years. Boston's mayor says this one even surprised him. Well, it's the first time I, I can remember in four years since we had a snowstorm or any significant rain that we've had flooding that, that's come up as far and gone into some basements. And check out what strong winds did to this gas station roof in New Jersey. The winds caused it to twist and eventually sent it crashing to the ground. No one was hurt. Firefighters were able to shut off the gas lines and electricity before the wind knocked down the roof. Flights suspended yesterday at airports like JFK are set to resume this morning. Air traffic suspensions at LaGuardia Airport have also been lifting. According to the flight tracking website FlightAware, nearly 5,000 flights were canceled across the U.S. yesterday. Those flights included more than two thirds of flights in and out of New York City and Boston airports. New this morning, State Attorney General Bill Schuette has decided to launch an investigation into Michigan State University and how it handled the Larry Nasser sexual abuse case. That's according to Fox 2 out of Detroit. The official announcement of the investigation is expected to be made soon, but no word on when exactly that will be. Several of Nasser's victims have been calling for an investigation into MSU's handling of Nasser's scandal 
for months. Now, they claim the university could have prevented dozens of girls from being abused if MSU did not ignore complaints about Nasser years ago. Last month, Nasser was sentenced to 60 years behind bars on federal child porn charges. He has appealed that sentence. In less than two weeks, Nasser will be sentenced on 10 criminal sexual conduct charges in Ingham County. A judge has set aside that entire week, so more than 100 victims are invited to speak will get their chance. Nasser will be in court on the 31st for sentencing in Eaton County. President Donald Trump ordered his White House counsel to stop Attorney General Jeff Sessions from recusing himself in the Justice Department's investigation into potential ties between Russia and the Trump campaign. That's according to what the New York Times and the Associated Press are reporting. The Times cited two sources saying White House counsel Don McGahn tried but failed to persuade Sessions to not recuse himself. Now, Sessions stepped aside last March after news came to light that he had spoken with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. back in 2016. There's a lot of frustration growing this morning within several states that have legalized marijuana. This after U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions rescinded an Obama administration policy that banned federal law enforcement from prosecuting marijuana sales that are legal under state law. Earlier this week, California became the eighth state, along with the District of Columbia, to allow recreational sales of marijuana. And California's Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom released a statement after Sessions' announcement calling on federal leaders to move quickly to protect states' rights from the harmful effects of this, quoting now, ideological temper tantrum by Sessions. Again, Newsom's words there. There's new information on a murder investigation we've been tracking for you. The Williamson teenager accused of killing his mother last year is competent to stand trial. A judge made that ruling yesterday, a few months after 19-year-old Andrew Wilson was ordered to undergo testing at the state's psychiatric center. Lisa Marie Wilson was found dead inside of her home in Wheatfield Township on September 8th. Police say Andrew Wilson admitted he shot and killed his mom because she wouldn't let him keep a puppy. He's due back in court on January 18th. Police have identified the woman hit and killed by a pickup truck on Lansing's south side Wednesday night. Police say 47-year-old Chanel Carson was walking in the road on MLK near Hughes Road. Police say she was not using the crosswalk. We told you yesterday police said the driver of that truck had not been drinking or using drugs. Police are asking anyone who might have seen that accident to give them a call. $418 million up for grabs tonight. Night, that's what the current Mega Million jackpot sits at. It's been rolling over since October 13th of last year. Tonight's jackpot is the 16th largest lottery prize ever. We'll have the winning numbers for you tonight on News 10 at 11. And don't forget about tomorrow night's Powerball drawing. That jackpot now sits at over half a billion dollars. The $550 million jackpot is the eighth largest lottery prize in history. Whoever wins that, if anyone does, will have the option to have the jackpot paid in 30 annual payments or a one-time cash option of just under $350 million before taxes. There's some chump change there. Well, even though no one has cracked either one of those jackpots, an Ingham County woman won a nice chunk of change on a scratch-off ticket. The 94-year-old recently won $100,000 from a bonus cash word instant game ticket that she got as a thank you gift for watching her daughter dog over the holidays. It was bought at the Meyer on South Pennsylvania in Lansing. The winner says that she'll use the winnings to help her grandkids out and with anything left over, She's going to try her hand at a at the casino there. Well, she's got her Ooh. luck running now. I know. So might as well go for it. Go for it. it. Yeah. That's right. It's good for her. All right. Straight ahead. Wrong gas woes. Yeah, drivers outraged and blaming a big gas station mistake for ruining their cars. And we check out time saver traffic for you this morning. Uh, 